okay so let's consider some example okay so so what i'm going to do is i'm going to assume uh, uh you know a couple of utility functions okay and then what we're going to do is we'll we'll uh you know figure out set of all efficient allocations in this in this triangle by plotting uh, level curves or indifference curves okay so again uh, let's uh, just stick with this for the time being you know set of all feasible allocations is 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 given by this this particular set okay so this remains the set of all feasible allocation uh, and what i'm going to do is i'm going to consider u1 x1 g is equal to let's say 3x1 plus 2g okay and u2 x2g is equal to 3x2 plus 2g okay now before i draw any picture okay can you tell me just by looking at this okay can you tell me if uh, uh, this allocation that i'm going to give you now is predictive okay so suppose uh, the allocation is 5 comma 5 comma 0 okay so what that means is x1 is 5 x2 is 5 g is 0 okay uh, so is this allocation for it efficient what do you think just by looking at this both are only consuming consuming private good okay they are not consuming any amount of public good so can you tell me uh, is this per efficient so remember what is per efficiency we say that an allocation is pretty efficient if there is no feasible way in which you can improve the satisfaction level of one without reducing the satisfaction level of the other so is there any feasible way in which you can improve the satisfaction level of one without reducing the satisfaction level of the other okay you are saying it is not pretty efficient okay very good that's right zero zero ten is 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 definitely a better allocation in in terms of you know the utility that it's going to give to both of them uh zero zero ten is pareto superior to it absolutely very good okay so yeah i mean you are able to figure that out okay let me ask you another one okay what about this one so let's say it is uh six zero four is this pareto efficient okay so this is uh you know a little uh tricky you know but uh the the, the idea here is this you know let me just tell you uh you know if you, if you just think about this you know this guy uh, uh values uh private good one and a half times more than he values uh public good okay uh so it's like uh you know the marginal utility of private good is three marginal utility of public good is two okay uh but uh uh but the thing is that let's say if the other person is going to you know if the, if let's say you know both individuals contribute uh, equal amount of uh, private good to produce a public good then both can be made better because you know let's say if, if this guy if this guy gives up half a unit of public uh, half a unit of private good this guy gives up half half a unit of private good collectively they are giving up one unit of private good uh, you know which would mean that uh, you know uh, this guy after giving up half a unit of private good gets in return you know uh uh two level of satisfaction and the cost will be three by two okay so in net terms both are you know benefiting from this kind of uh uh kind of move but if you see at this point okay the only person that has private good is individual one okay so he individually wouldn't want to you know uh give any amount of private good uh to uh produce public good okay uh you know he he would want he would want to uh contribute to the production of uh, of public good only if the other person uh also you know contributes with him okay uh so it turns out that this is pretty efficient because there is no feasible way in which you can improve the satisfaction level of any of them without reducing the satisfaction level of the other okay so this is you know purely by logical argument you know that you get pretty efficiency but you know let's let's just uh uh, use the graph okay uh, we already know that uh, you know uh, we have seen that how edgework box can help to figure out Pareto efficient allocations you know you can also use this particular uh, triangle to figure out Pareto efficient allocations in fact not just one but all of them okay so so let's just uh, let's just do that okay so what i'm going to do is i will draw 
triangle again okay uh, just to plot set of all uh, basically just to uh, figure out how to plot indifference curves in this okay and then what i'm going to do is i'll figure out uh, set of all efficient allocations once i have the indifference curves okay so this is origin of one this is origin of two okay and uh, again you have g on the vertical axis okay now u1 is 3x1 plus 2g okay so well for individual one you know there is no problem it's just the standard x1 g plane okay uh, so you can easily plot the indifference curve can you tell me what will be the slope of the indifference curve of individual one that's right okay so it is it is minus three by two in absolute terms it is three by two okay uh, so this line has slope one in absolute terms so if i draw something steeper okay which is uh, of slope three by two uh, then it will look like this right okay and i can draw you know the indifference map in this way the direction of preference is in this direction okay so basically the preference is increasing in in this direction is that clear okay so this is how you can plot the indifference curves of individual one okay now for individual two there is some complication okay it's it's not uh it's it's actually a function of x2 and g okay so you know what is happening is that if you have something like this you just have to shift everything you know when when it's just going to go down you have to shift everything uh you know horizontally okay uh so how to actually uh you know uh plot indifference curve of individual two okay so uh you know you have already seen uh something like this you know this this particular trick you know you have already seen that in uh the externalities problem you know when we were trying to plot uh uh you know indifference curve uh uh for a situation uh where we had consumption externalities uh in in uh, in an edgeworth box okay so we can do the similar thing here you know because when we are talking about parade efficiency we are just asking this question that if you know if this particular feasible allocation if there exists another feasible allocation that uh, leads to improvement in satisfaction level of one person without reducing the satisfaction level of the other so basically we can use the feasibility constraint to rewrite the utility function of two in terms of x1 and g okay so u2 adjusted will be a function of x1 and g and it will be equal to u2 so what is so u2 is actually a function of x2 and g right so i want to replace this x2 by uh you know something that is a function of x1 and g so how can i do that well i can use the feasibility constraint so if you remember feasibility is omega 1 plus omega 2 uh, is equal to x1 plus x2 plus g right so what i can do is instead of x1 i can write omega 1 plus omega 2 minus x1 minus g okay and this is g okay notice that now this is just a function of x1 and g right this is just a function of x1 and g so now you are actually in this plane only okay so you when you when you plot the indifference curve for this utility function you know which is adjusted for feasibility okay uh, uh you will get uh uh, the indifference curve uh you know for individual two okay so that that's all that you need to do i mean it's just just straightforward okay uh so let's let's just now do this okay so what is u2 well uh you can just uh, write what is omega one plus omega two in our case it's 10 so uh and uh you know u2 is this so I'm going to replace x2 by 10 minus x1 minus g. Okay, and I'm going to replace. Oh well, we don't need to replace anything uh, for g. You know, we're we're just going to write it as it is. So this is the adjusted utility function. Okay, uh, 
there is no problem in using this the reason is because you know as i've already told you that when we are talking about efficient allocations we are checking if there is a feasible way you know so that's the key word if there's a feasible way in which you can improve the satisfaction level of one without reducing the satisfaction level of the other so you can use the feasibility constraint to rewrite the utilities because eventually you'll be uh, comparing one feasible allocation with the other to check for Pareto efficiency is that fine so you can rewrite uh, the utility function in terms of any pair of variables okay uh, using the feasibility constraint it's completely okay you know is that fine okay so let me just write this 30 minus 3x1 minus 3g plus 2g okay and we're gonna get what 30 minus 3x1 minus g okay is that fine okay now let's plot some indifference curves okay uh, so okay now can you tell me if you plot indifference curve for individual uh, uh for for individual uh two what will be the slope of these indifference curves yeah so minus three in absolute terms three that's right okay very good so if i draw them they'll be steeper than uh you know individual individual uh, ones i see do you agree because individual ones i see have slope three by two individual twos i see have slope three so they'll be steeper and uh where is the direction of preference in which direction the preference is increasing this one or that one this way right because if you see you know very it's very simple to check this because you know like let's just compare this point and this point notice that you know the amount of public good that is consumed in both these points is the same okay but the amount of private good consumed by individual two has gone up so basically the utility is increasing in this direction okay so this is the direction of preference is that fine now can you tell me what are the efficient allocations now that you, you know the picture okay so it's just actually straightforward can this point be Pareto efficient for example can you say this is Pareto efficient very good no interior point is no interior point is going to be pretty efficient okay what about this point okay what about this point is this pretty efficient look at this in this region you can make both of them better off if you move from this point to this point this guy will be on a higher indifference curve this guy will also be on a higher indifference curve so you can actually make both of them better off is that clear so this is not Pareto efficient okay what about these points what about this point for example is this Pareto efficient yes it is okay you can see that you can make individual two better off here but if you move in this region you'll end up making one worse off if you move in this region you'll end up making uh you know two worse off uh so clearly there is no way in which you can improve the satisfaction level of one without reducing the satisfaction level of the other okay uh, so you know all these points are pretty efficient by symmetry all these points are also pretty efficient okay so basically you know you're going to get set of all efficient allocations as this okay so these are set of all efficient allocations okay these are set of all efficient allocations is this clear to everyone any questions okay so you can write Pareto efficient allocations as x1 x2 g in the feasible set such that x1 is 0 or x2 is 0 okay please don't write and here okay if you write x1 is 0 and x2 is 0 that that's that's going to give you just this point okay you want these points as well as these points so you're going to write or x2 is 0 